Hey, what's going on, everyone, and welcome to my review of the second generation 2014 Moto G. So, the Moto G is Motorola's budget friendly smartphone lineup. The main reason why this is an extremely popular device is the price. Off contract, it's going to cost you $179. To put this in perspective, the iPhone 6 and the Samsung Galaxy S5 are both $650 without contract, so they're three times more expensive than the Moto G. With a low budget price tag, how does the Moto G perform? Well, let's take a closer look at this device. With a lower end phone, you might expect that the build quality is not very good. Well, this is not the case for the Moto G. It's a very solid phone, it feels great in the hand. The back plate is plastic with matte finish, and the plastic edges doesn't make it as slippery as some aluminum phones, so it gives a nice grip in your hand. With the matte finish on the back, it's not going to attract many fingerprints, but the glossy plastic on the side will attract some fingerprints. The power and the volume buttons on the side are easy to press, but it feels very wobbly, almost as if it's going to fall out. And also, if you don't like the color of your back plate, you can actually replace it with many back plate options that you can purchase on different websites. Now let's move on to the screen. This has a 5 inch, 720p HD, 294 pixels per inch IPS display. For a $180 phone, the screen is fantastic. This has excellent color contrast and saturation. The 720p screen resolution may not be as high as other smartphones, but the overall display is still crystal clear. A downside I noticed about the screen is that at maximum brightness, it doesn't get very bright. So this may not be the best smartphone if you often use your device in direct sunlight. The Moto G is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 quad-core 1.2GHz processor with the Adreno 305 graphics. 1GB of RAM and 8GB of internal storage. Of course, the specs and the benchmark won't be too impressive, but from my experience, it's still very snappy and the user interface is very responsive. I did experience a few lag and some freezes here and there, but you have to keep in mind that this is only a $180 phone and it still performs quite well. I can run most applications including some casual and some intense graphic games. And also this is running on Android 4.4.4 KitKat. So this is going to give a pure Android experience. And there are no third party skins over the software. So scrolling through pages, opening folders, and adding widgets, everything is going to be fairly smooth. Something that Motorola improved from the last generation Moto G is that they added a micro SD card slot. So if you take off the back plate, you can actually insert a micro SD card up to 32 gigabytes. The battery, just like the first generation, is not removable. And the battery life on the Moto G is actually quite good. I was quite surprised after using it for a day. This has a 2070 milliamp hour battery, and because the screen resolution is not very high, and it doesn't use large processing powers and graphics, the phone doesn't eat up the battery that quick. So for me, this can easily last through a full day of moderate usage. And inside settings, I can enable the battery saving mode to make it last a bit longer. Another nice improvement is that the speakers are now on the front. First of all, the two speaker bars, in my opinion, doesn't look too good. I wish that it was black instead of silver colored, so that it would have a completely black bezel. And since the speakers are facing towards your face or towards your ears, the sound quality is very impressive. Of course, it's not as good as the HTC Boom Sound speakers, but it does get quite loud. It doesn't have a lot of bass. The mids and highs are sometimes overpowering and not very clear. But I have to say, for a $200 smartphone, it's a very nice feature to have front-facing speakers. So here's a quick comparison between this and the iPhone 6. And compared to the iPhone 6, the Moto G is quite chunky, it's not very light. And according to today's standards, it's also not very thin. But as I said in the beginning of the video, this may be a good thing because it's not as slippery as the iPhone 6. The curved back makes the phone fit nicely in the hand. Now we can move on to the cameras. On the first generation Moto G with a 5 megapixel camera, it was definitely a weak point. So with this Moto G, they improved the camera to 8 megapixels, so it's going to be sharper, and the exposure is going to be more accurate. But of course, it's not as good as high-end smartphones such as the iPhone or the Galaxy S5. The camera interface on the Moto G is simple to use. Swipe from the left, you can change all the camera settings and change different camera modes. And if I swipe from the right, I can access all the previous photos I took. This has a 2 megapixel front-facing camera. I didn't get a chance to take a selfie. So let's move on to the video quality. On the back-facing camera, you can record 720p HD videos at 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, it doesn't record 1080p HD, so you can only record in 720p. And here's a front-facing video test and a microphone test. 
All right, so here's a front-facing video test of the Moto G. Um, this is recording in 720p HD, and you can also hear the microphone on this device. I do apologize for not getting any good video footage and photos because it's raining pretty hard right now. So this concludes my review of the Moto G. In conclusion, this is the best budget smartphone that you can get right now. With a solid build quality, nice screen size and screen resolution, decent battery life, and a pure Android experience, the Moto G is definitely worth the price. So if you're a person that don't want to spend too much money or you just simply don't need a high-end smartphone, the $180 Moto G is a promising option.